have Googled and looked at so many things about people who are rich in Ghana. I'm not one of them. Oh. I'm not one of them. My name is not there. I'm <laughs> one of them. <laughs> I, I, am, I am someone trying to be able to help people create employment, uh, create an environment that people can work. And in my definition, if you describe Joseph Japan as a person of, who is rich, I will go rather for saying that, look, um, how I define people to be rich, or if you say I'm rich, is that I look at how to create employment. I look at how people should live well. My background, where I was born, I was born in a village, a deep village. When you look at Ghana map, you don't even find a village there. It's called Asina Muabin. Hmm. And by birth, I was born in the farm, in the bush. When my mommy was in labor, uh, my father married three wives, hmm. and I'm the fifth of 17 children. Wow. A very poor family. And so when I was born and I lived there, my background has cultivated me and where I schooled, where I live, the way I, I do my things has ushered me into trying to find solutions to problems. Hmm. And so I would define my richness to be creating employment, giving opportunities so that people can live well, hmm. looking at where I also suffered. I, I think that people shouldn't suffer the same way I've gone through. And so if God has enabled me grace, and most of the things I do, my education level ended at Royal Technical College, Electrical Engineer, at the age of 22. The rest that I'm able to achieve is by God. I didn't merit it myself. So most of the things I do, I, I consider it that sharing. And when you read the Bible, when we talk about Abraham being a worthy person, he was worthy in cattle, in gold, in silver, and so many things, and servants. Mm. And what God did was to choose Abraham out of his family and then bless him. So I consider myself someone blessed, and I have to share the blessing with Ghanaians. I have to share with society. So I can find being wealthy or being rich that someone born in a village, in a bush, God has enabled him to come to this level and is sharing his passion, his love with people. And mm. that's how I will define my richness. I will not talk about I own houses and no, no. I define being rich as being able to be a blessing to people. Mm. But surely, I mean, you, you also have a very healthy bank balance. Exactly how rich are you? Um, I would say that, as we speak now, if you even ask me a bank balance, I have to call the chief finance officer to be able to tell me what. Because my focus is not uh, as looking at funds, getting a, a huge deposit that he wealths one billion to no that, not, that's not the focus um i'm t somebody who's trying i'm trying to be rich i'm not there yet <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right now um you you recently did an interview for forbes africa uh, and you talked about how you made your mm. fortune um by solving problems in fact you you even said it this mm. morning uh, that you you believe in solving problems but mm. seriously how how does one man go from selling books at Makola to owning 45 companies. Mm. Uh, that's good. Um, I think that I'll uh, kindly give a background of uh, my life mm. to listeners. As I indicated, I was born in a village, and, and so I was brought to Accra. We, I stayed at Tishi with my family. My father owned a house there, so we were staying there life become, became challenging that we migrated from the city back to a place known called Odubi in Asante Achim area. So from the village born, came to the city, and my mother gave me the name Felix. I was called Felix, not Joseph. Mm. It was close to that my father, when he was looking at my boots, saw that the name Felix. He said, ah, Kwame, you are not Felix, you are Joseph. So he named me renamed again mm. so I took the name Joseph mm. and so when after schooling and things became difficult uh, that I'm talking about the village the village life I 
moved from Accra to the village in Asante Achim, school there, did everything barefooted. I was a Libra. I have tried everything there. I could remember that one time, every Friday, when we close from school, the teachers, someone, the market woman who comes to the village and buy oranges and other things, will use some of the... So every Friday, you are supposed to carry a basket to school. And then when you go to the school, the teachers will announce by 11 o'clock we have closed, then we move to the farm. These were all experiences that I passed through. I will walk 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers to farm and then be a laborer. I've, when you look at my hand, and uh, I wish you could see, it's very handy because I hold matches and everything. I, I climb palm, palm tree. In the village, I was not using lotion or cream. Sometimes I would take palm nut. Then when I peel it by scratch the juicy part of it, and then the cream, I use it to be a lotion. So, so I, you were extracting oil from what, the palm yes. nut to, to smear on Small your skin as lotion. Wonderful. That is the life. I slept a When I was schooling in the village from uh, class four to class six, barefooted, hmm. life was so challenging, everything. So God, in his wisdom, um, asked my brother, my elder brother called Daniel. He came to Accra first, and then we followed. This was the year in the 80s. Mm. So we followed him, and when I came, um, all my colleagues that I started school have moved ahead. I repeated because my l English language and everything was so poor that they repeated me. So I went back to start from class three. In class two year, I was supposed to be at class six by then. I repeated. Uh, I struggled after completion, f sat for the common entrance, I passed. I chose Wesley Grammar. My father says he hasn't got money hmm. to continue on. So I have to go to a technical school called Royal Technical College. I did. and. The course that even I was choosing for me was electrical engineering. And my father chose the course that, oh, just give him electrical engineering, uh, electrical course. And hmm. I didn't even, that was not my passion. My ambition was to be a pilot or a marine engineer. That was when oh, really? schooling. Yeah, when Why marine engineer? Is, I thought it was a prestigious job to be a pilot. Hmm. When I see a pilot, even though I've not sat in plane at that time, and I see the, in the pictures, the way they are dressed, oh, I wish that when I'm dressed in that form, mm. it could have been better. Mm. Or How be about marine engineer? What marine engineer. Glamorous about that. You, when you take in the sky, mm. you're talking about the plane. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk on the land, you're talking also about the ships. Mm. So I was looking at it. If not a so pilot on the sea, yeah. on the sea mm. if I'm not a pilot, then on the sea, I must be <laughs> a marine engineer. <laughs> All right, I get it. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so, yeah. So keep going. when I completed the technical school, my father told me, look, Joseph, we don't have money. The family is poor. We don't have nothing. So it is better to go and help your mommy at um, in, uh, 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 that place was called Bank of Ghana, Top Road. That was the place. In Accra. Center. Accra, where they were selling booths, exercise booths, stationery, mm -hmm. but it's well known, even as today. Mm -hmm. All the people there knows me, knows wow. my life. Wow. And uh, my mommy was squatting in front of someone's shop. So he goes and uh, she goes there. Then I join her. And then I'll be selling with her. I will carry some of the books. Rollins Park. Every corner of Rollins Park, I know the place. And I do my business on seasonal. When it is Christmas time, I divert into jewelries and then shirts. I've walked from here to Spinter's Road. I've walked from Accra to Spinter's Road, Accra to Labadi, Apapa. And I know every corner. I'm probing. When you move me there, I know that was. Joseph, that is the kind of thing. Trying everything with a family of 17 to see how best I can survive so that my siblings also can make a life. Wow. And when it started moving into that, my mommy became very ill and felt serious, very serious ill. I tried on more my best and she passed away. Oh. So it was left me alone that I have to try and see how best my other siblings will also survive. And that's developed into trying everything. I've been a commission agent uh, whereby I'll go to uh, schools. You can ask most of the school, Morning Star, Soaklin. Everyone knows me there. 
I'll go and then say, look, I can supply you stationery. Give me the order. When the order is given, then I'll look for a printing press and I'll go there and then give the order to the company and then ask them to give me a commission. So I started business on that mm. without nothing. As a middleman. Middleman. And because of the hardship and the things that I've gone through, my mind is that let me try everything and see how best I can make life. Mm. And that's Joseph. That's how I've been trying and developing. And in the year two, 1995, I started the business on my own. I uh, went to Jamestown, looked mm. for a small shop there, and then started something. And I named the, the company Just Pond because it was Joseph at Japan. So I used mm. the name Just Pond uh, Enterprise and I started business. Could you? Life has not been easy, hmm. but with focus and determination that, look, when you try, it can be very successful. And that's how far God has helped me develop one business from the other to today. Wow. So, so now from those humble beginnings of selling exercise books and jewelry and T-shirts, today you have 45 companies. Is it 45 or is it more than 45? It's 45. Wow. 45 and still counting. Amazing. Right, now, you are an exception. That's the truth. There aren't many Ghanaians who oh, you know, are heads of conglomerates who have uh, global businesses. And people often say it's impossible for a Ghanaian to create personal wealth you know, uh, in their own country, and that it's actually easier for foreigners. Do you see that to be true? Um, I will. It's very good of this question that you've asked. And I'm, I'm talking very passionately and very personal on these issues and also seeing how best we can develop this country. I've recognized that nations and countries developed through the private sector, through its people. So when we are talking about the Big East, we are talking about they having a kind of environment that develops them. They, don't, they already didn't start bigger like the Big East. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, could you, I take myself as a student from Lagos, and then I, I complete school, four-year degree, and then life is in front of me. How do I make it? Uh, even schooling, when I was schooling and I was pursuing the electrical engineering course, we were pursuing this course without even having a practical experience. I could remember that one day I was given a contract after school, I'm, oh, I'm going to try it. I get shocked by joining the cables mm. because it's quite sometimes difficult to even get a practical experience during school mm. so that you can be able to make. Mm. So our system here, when I started Zoom Lion in 2006, I was looking for people with knowledge in waste management. It's quite, quite difficult. So the system from school education, you schooling and sometimes even getting internship when students are on holidays, getting companies to even engage you so that it gives you a practical life mm. so that when you complete school so the system make it very 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 difficult so that when you are out you can start something on your own mm. but however i would say that by focus and determination and hard work you can make it so it has two sides it has its negative side and its positive side so i would say that it's quite, quite difficult. The most sad thing is that you are doing a business as a local indigenous. You also have a foreign serious competitor doing the same business. So in that space, you have also a serious competitor. Raising funds is difficult. Getting practical experience is difficult. Skills. What I would say that Ghanaians, we are trying our best. It's the same Ghanaians that go abroad and do big, great things. But the environment and the atmosphere sometimes don't encourage. And that's why most of the students want to go outside to work. If we can look at the system and see how best we can customize the system for the Ghanaian to have certain businesses, that doesn't, is more protected. Look, it is even coming to a time that foreigners will sell wachi, the same wachi we are selling, because they are doing good to boot with everything. And in developed countries, I've traveled. There are certain businesses a foreigner cannot do it. I'm working in Angola. I'm working other places. No. Work Equatorial Guinea. No. So I think that it is time that we protect the local 
so that the younger ones can start something. If you want to start any business, look, our furniture is collapsed. I knew of a go, I knew of some of you. Now everything is imported. Everything. They are even um, um, dressing that with suits and everything that people can come and take your size here, go to Hong Kong and sew your suit and bring it. That's how far it has gone. People can even come and take your, your size. You go there, I was walking uh, to parliament and one, oh, uh, chief, how? I can take your size and go, to, where? He's going to India and bring me a suit. When I married at the age of 28, Opera Square, that's where I sew my suit. Now, most of the suits now, why can't we preserve some of these things that some of these things may not be in flux and dilute the potential? My simple issue is that business is demand. If the demand is not there, there's nothing that it can do. So when people are said that Ghanaians are lazy, Ghanaians are not skillful, if you are not giving them the experience by them making more mistakes and correcting it and investing in technology, how can they become skillful? So certain businesses might be protected for the local indigenous, mm -hmm. for the younger generations that are coming, and the time will come, we'll be out. And things, when you are going to tender, and the criteria is.